Good morning, everyone. This is Cassie Stumo. I am the Marketing Specialist here at EAC. Uh, we'll begin today's session with an intro of our company and then uh, Cody Wiltrout, uh, PTC's Technical Account Specialist, will be diving into how you can optimize your designs with Creo Flow analysis. Everyone gets a recording of the session pending any technical difficulties. Um, please feel free to drop questions in the chat and we'll answer them after the presentation. Um, I'll go ahead and pass things over to you, Justin, whenever you're ready. Good morning, everyone. Okay, so for those of you who do not know who we are, I'll start off with a quick introduction to EAC. Our mission is to transform the way companies design, manufacture, connect to, and service their products. We are not only a value-added reseller for PTC, but we are the number one solutions provider for PTC in the country, something EAC is very proud of. We have experts in 22 areas of product development, and are located all over the U.S. with our headquarters in Burnsville, Minnesota. We offer our customers everything they need for product development, such as Creo CAD software for product design, service lifecycle management software for managing service documentation, and software that helps you manage your product data, such as Windchill, Things, ThingWorks Navigate, and our customizable EAC productivity apps. We implement the Internet of Things and augmented reality into business strategies to jumpstart initiatives around digital transformation and connecting all things in your company. We assist with design and engineering projects like FEA, simulation, reverse engineering, and proof of concepts for our customers. And we offer webinars and PTC certified training courses for continuous learning. We are also a commercial reseller for Form Labs, offering their latest products in additive manufacturing, the Form 3 is now available with packages starting at $3,499. Any previous owners of the Form 2 prior to the Form 3 release date of April 2nd of this year will receive $500 off their order of the Form 3 until June 30th of 2019. So you still have some time. Another month to purchase the Form 3 at a great discount. Also, the Form 2 is now sold at a discounted price of $2,850. So keep us in mind, we have a variety of tools to help your organization save time and money throughout the product development process. Thank you for taking the time to listen to who we are, and I'll hand it over to Cody so he can get started. Well, everyone, nice to be here with you all today. As uh, I was introduced earlier, my name is Cody Wiltrout, and I am an application engineer here with PTC, and I focus mostly on our CAD and PLM tools. And today I'm going to be going over uh, fluid dynamics inside of Creo. So to start off with just a little background on why we chose to partner with a company called Sumerix to add this into our capabilities. Uh, you know, often engineers don't necessarily have classical training in uh, CFD and it can be a pretty complex tool and problem to approach. And because of that, it does normally require expensive third party tools to be able to do and to be able to analyze. And it's often pretty time consuming, like high-end simulation can be. And so every time that you're having to go through and run an analysis on a new step, not only does it take time, but it takes expertise and someone who can do that. And to go off of that, because of these issues, a lot of times people end up testing on physical prototypes as opposed to doing simulation, which can become very costly if you have to run through multiple prototypes. And if you do have a problem with that prototype, now you've got to go back and make changes and go through that whole process again, which can put you not only by uh, delayed for the time uh, spent going back and doing rework, but as I said, with the prototypes, that cost adds up very quickly and can cause something to go over budget for a project. And that's why PTC really decided to partner with Sumerix to build in this new solution into Creo so that uh, Creo flow analysis could be done uh, directly inside of the tool, similar to what we've done in the past with other analysis capabilities. So off to begin with, it's intended to be for engineers and designers. It's not necessarily meant to be for a specialist. So it's meant for anyone to be able to use. And with that, it creates a pretty seamless workflow between CAD and CFD so that you can really make CFD part of your design, not just something that an expert does or something that you send off and wait for it to come back with. 
with the mesh generation, it does generate the mesh automatically for you. So you can choose to generate the mesh and it will know to try to refine the mesh in you know more complex geometries and then to make it a little less refined so it'll run a little faster in flat spaces and simple geometries. Of course, you can always edit that if you need to. So if you do want to change the meshing, uh, you do have some of that capability inside of here. And with that, then once you have everything set up, it has a pretty rapid simulation turnaround time. Uh, so you're not waiting a long time to get those results back and can take that feedback in and get into your next aspect of your design. And with the results, it's highly accurate and gives you a lot of different ways to view those, whether that be with plots, displaying things on the surfaces, doing sections through uh, your model, whatever it would be, it can help with that process. Uh, so I'll go ahead and jump into uh, the demonstration here and see how that, so we can all see how that looks inside of Creo. And then we can jump back over uh, to close off with a few points. So starting off for today, we're just gonna be working with this inverter here. And all we need to do is come into our applications and choose flow analysis to start. And so when you come into here, it's just gonna give you this new toolbar to use similar to maybe what Creo Simulate might do. In our case, we want to start by making a new project. So I'm just gonna say new project and then create fluid domain. So the first step in this process is to create the domain that this fluid is gonna be flowing through and Creo can help you with that so that you don't have to do any kind of rework or double work on the, in this case. Uh, so number one, you've noticed that we did not have to export or import anything. It's all built into the same um, area, all inside of Creo. So helping to close that gap. And now that we have this model already made, I can just say, well, these are the openings that this is going to flow through. And based off of those openings then, figure out where the fluid is flowing. And so it's gonna see all of that inside of there. Uh, now I should note that when we say uh, which faces it's gonna be flowing through, it might recognize some holes that we don't want fluid to flow through, like in this case, this switch or the power outlet. So we can say, remove those. And once we remove those, then we can add it to our simulation and it will create that simulation body for us. So if we turn off our CAD body, we can see uh, the outer edge is gone and we just have our flow body. But now we need to remove solid components because a lot of the stuff inside of there is solid and obviously fluid won't flow through that. And again, we can just use our model tree to select all the components that are gonna be solid and remove those. So now we've set up our fluid body and removed all of our, our solids. So the next step in the process is to choose what types of physics we wanna be looking at. In our case, we're gonna start with just some turbulence, heat, and streamlines. Once we have our physics selected, we could apply any materials, start setting up our mesh and our boundary conditions. So the first thing I'll note here is that we are gonna be looking at some thermal uh, flow. And so we have this chip here that we're gonna have being thermal output. So we'll make sure that we assign the correct material for it. And if we find it then here in our list, so we have our thermal chip here, we can make this the heat source for today's demonstration. So we'll just choose uh, to make that a total heat and then give it a specified value that we want it to be at. And so we'll just set it to five watts for now. And we're also gonna put an output. So one of the uh, outputs talking to how you wanna view things, we're gonna make a plot. So we're just gonna set up a plot based off of the heat uh, that's, or the temperature output that's gonna be coming from that chip. Now that we have the chip generating the heat, the next thing we need are our boundary condi conditions. So the first thing we're gonna do is say that we are gonna have a specified pressure inlet, on, pressure inlet on the one side. So no fans or anything, just allow the air to flow through on the side with the cuts. And then on the other side, we are gonna have a volumetric flow because we're gonna have this fan active. So we're just gonna say we have a volumetric outflow, set what that's going to be. And now we've got our boundary conditions. So now that we've done that, we can hit generate mesh. And as I said, it'll go through and generate that for you for us automatically. If you wanted to change it, you could. In our case, we're probably just gonna leave it as is for now. But if you do want to look at that, if we turn off the uh, outer surface here and just take a look at the inside, we can turn that mesh on and see what that actually looks like here across uh, the part so that we can check and make sure that everything looks good in the way that we want. Now that we've got everything set up, we've got our X and Y plot we're ready to start. So we can say run, and you'll see on the left-hand side, it'll show us it converging as it continues to run through here. 
And if we look at the right hand side, we can see our temperature. So we're hitting steady state temperature of around 345, 350 degrees. We can start displaying the streamlines that we picked for one of our physics as well. And from this now I could say very quickly, okay, we're getting a lot of turbulence in the center right now, losing a lot of air stream flow and our 350, 345 degree, uh, you know, steady state temperature is too high for this inverter. So I need to start making some changes to fix that problem. Uh, well, maybe the first thing I want to do is just take a deeper look before I even make any changes. So I'll increase or decrease the time for my streams so I can take those in smaller chunks. Then maybe I want to start uh, displaying some different information in different ways to really get a deeper understanding of what's going on and figure out the most appropriate way to solve this problem. So in my case, I'll just start by displaying the temperature on the surface here so I can see how that temperature is spread out on the inside. And so you can see most of it's on the inverter that are in the chip there in the center of the inverter and then a little bit off to the left towards the fan along the bottom. But we could also look at a section. So if I want to see the heat rising off of the chip, I could look at that section and see that we're actually getting some backflow uh, toward where our plug is. And even further than that, we could set up an ISO surface and say we want to see all the uh, area or volume above a certain temperature. And again, now I can very clearly see that we're getting some backflow and not getting the heat sucked out through the fan the way that we want. Knowing that, my first step might just be to say, I'm just gonna increase the volumetric outflow. We're gonna give it a more powerful fan and then we're gonna rerun this and see what happens. So just like we saw the first time, I can start rerunning this uh, simulation here. Again, on the left-hand side, it's going to slowly start converging toward our answer. And on the right hand side, we can see the plot for the steady state temperature showing us that we went down from around 345 down to around 330. So that's some pretty good improvement so far. And looking at the streamlines going through the center here, we can tell that we are still losing a little bit to turbulence. We're still losing a little bit on that right side there that's flowing back. But overall, it seems like we're having a lot less loss there and probably having the heat flow um, a little bit less back towards that plug outlet again that we saw. Uh, now, going off of what we've done so far, you know, setting up our analysis, running it once, seeing that we were too high of a temperature, increasing our volumetric outflow and seeing that we've reduced our temperature by around 20, 25 degrees already. I still might think that this is a little bit too high of a temperature for what I want. And maybe I can't really afford to put a more powerful fan than what we've already done inside of this inverter. So I need to take a different approach now to solve my problem. Well, because I'm inside of Creo, that's not really an issue. I can just toggle between simulation and modeling. And because of that, now I can change more than just my boundary conditions to you know, reduce the temperature down here on this chip. I can do actual model modifications as well. So maybe I just say adding some extra vents might help to reduce uh, that backflow even further, allow more air to flow through and reduce the temperature further. So I just wanna test that out. Well, I'm just gonna recognize my cut here, use some flex modeling to pattern that out and extend that pattern a little bit further here. So we'll just add one more uh, to the pattern and then we will go ahead and recognize the other two cuts over here as well and add another of those to uh, the pattern as well. And again, because you're in Creo, you have this kind of seamless transition between the two without having to import, export, or push updates. And with this, we could save that project and open it back up. So we already made the project. I'm just gonna update it for the new fluid domain. And when it does that, again, the only thing I'm gonna to need to change is say, again, watch for those holes that it's identifying that might not be holes. So in our case, it's gonna still identify the kind of switch and the power inlet in, uh, input there. So I'll remove those again, but that's all I need to do. Other than that, everything else is still set up from what I ran before. And I can now just say, okay, let's go ahead and run this again. And as we start running this, now we can see our steady state temperature has dropped maybe slightly further. Uh, you know, it's close to where it was before, maybe a small reduction. And our uh, peak temperature at the beginning has dropped significantly from where it was before. 
So overall, maybe that's kind of the best option I have for what I want to do. But this is the idea with career flow analysis is that you can set up these analysis in a pretty intuitive way for designers and engineers to use and then be able to toggle between your analysis and your actual design work so that you can improve your designs and make sure that you're not going to have any problems whenever you do get to that physical prototype test. So to jump back over, uh, just to close off with a few points here, uh, some value that this tool really brings into the environment is number one, it allows you to have analysis driven design. And it also helps to reduce cost and time to market because you're not having to iterate and run back through, you know, um, after having found out that there's problems whenever you do do prototyping. And it can then increase the product quality and the innovation through your work that you do with those designs. A few things to note. Uh, so first off, uh, this is, as I've been saying, uh, something that we partnered with a group called Samerix for. And uh, first off, it comes in a few different packages. So there's uh, just the basic that gives you the ability to simulate flow down through turbulence. Then uh, there's plus, which gives you particle radiation species and moving sliding meshing. And then lastly, at premium, you have the ability to look at cavitation, multi-phase, multi-component, and dynamics. And on the right-hand side here, we have some images from uh, Samaric's library. And if you actually Google them, they have a full library online of just some examples of what uh, their designs look like and how they work. So that is always an option if you do want to see kind of what that might look like inside of Creo, you can go to uh, their website and view a gallery of some examples that they already have set up. And uh, for all of those of you who are interested in Creo Simulation Live as well, in the near future, uh, I think within the next year, I believe it is, they're planning to add uh, some, flow, uh, some fluid analysis to Creo Simulation Live as well. So something to look forward to. So with that, uh, unless there's any questions, I'll go ahead and pass it back off. All right, I am not seeing any questions. I know Justin um, wanted to talk about a promotion that we've got going on right now. So I'll give it to you, Justin. Yes, I wanted to step in with some closing comments. Right now you can get up to 84% off a bundle of extensions for Creo with the new Creo Design Essentials package when you trade in your perpetual licenses and subscribe to PTC software. Please reach out to us if you have any questions. Thank you, Justin. And thank you, Cody, for that presentation. Um, those of you on the call will get a recording of the webinar shortly. Um, you can find our upcoming webinars on eacpds.com forward slash events. Um, or if you want to see any previous webinars to date, you can go out to our webinar.